Hey there guys, welcome to Dementia Care Source. Today we are gonna be going over some ideas of how to love someone with dementia from far away, whether it's the quarantine or you just live out of town, whatever reason, these are some ideas for how to reach out to your loved one with dementia, no matter the distance. And today we are talking all about games. Games are great for keeping our minds busy, maintaining attention, turn-taking, and just stretching our working memory. If you're looking to spend a little more money, there are all kinds of games online or that you can buy in store, but there's also a lot of ideas that you can just print off at home or using objects that you already have. So especially for with dementia, and anyone with a visual deficit, we want to aim to provide activities that are bright and colorful and have objects that you can hold on to in your hand, something a little more tangible. The games that will mean the most to them are probably gonna be games that they actually played when they were kids. So for someone in the earlier stages of dementia, try and think of games that you might play with someone in middle of elementary school but do keep in mind that we wanna be respectful and try and avoid the games that look too childlike. Some great examples for early stage dementia are the Mr. Mouth Feed the Frog games, which is where you throw and flick these little pieces into the frog's mouth. Kerplunk, which is a big tower with these marble looking things that are held up by uh, it's like plastic spaghetti pieces and you draw them out one at a time until all the marbles fall and Hi-Ho Cheerios is another great one. It will mean even more if they're games that they played as a kid. So thinking of like Lincoln Logs and Wooly Willy, those little magnetic boards with the man's face and you took the little magnet pieces and you could do a beard or hair or mustache. Um, the brand Neato, N-E-A-T-O, if you look that up online, they've got all kinds of great classic retro toys. Puzzles are also a great game for someone with dementia because you can get a more complex puzzle for someone in the earlier stages or for someone in middle stages. This is a Melissa and Doug toy. I'm gonna to be talking about them a lot today. So you can see that it's a little bit easier because it has a clue as to where each piece goes. So it's not just fitting the puzzle, but it's actually also matching and it's stages as well. So it's the stages of opening a banana. It gives you a clue. So this covers actually a lot of language skills at one time. Another Melissa and Doug puzzle of sorts that I really like is this one here. And so as you can see, you have all kinds of letters and you can fill them in. Not that we're teaching our elders with dementia how to read per se, but it's a good activity. It's pretty simple, it's colorful, it's big pieces. These aren't as much of a choking hazard. And it's gonna help with reading comprehension because it has the word and then the picture as well, and then you can have a conversation about it. Do you like birds? Do you like to watch birds? What's your favorite bird? Have you ever gone bird watching before? Whatever. So these are really good for building conversations. Some other great ideas for middle stage dementia are the dart boards, the Velcro dart boards. It doesn't even have to be a dart. I've also seen some that use little balls, little bean bags, and these can also be fun because you can play them by yourselves or with a roommate, make a little competition. Also, pattern boards are fantastic gifts. You can find printables online. You can literally make pattern boards out of anything um, because I'm on a Melissa and Doug kick right now. This is an example of they're pattern boards, so they're very durable. They've got these pieces, and you just match the pieces together. And if you're able to be with your loved one in person to make it easier instead of just having them go through all the pieces on their own, you can kind of set them out one by one so they can find where it goes. Or to go back and make it a little more difficult, set out all the pieces that you'll need so then they'll still have to scan those pieces to find the right one. These are really great for passing time. And again, it's working on your attention, accomplishing a task, and they're reusable. You can use them over and over again. One thing that comes very natural to us is sorting and matching. So take advantage of that and provide them with some sorting and matching activities. Again, something you can find in the store and spend some money on, or you can just make it home. Um, 
I worked with a lady that was a seamstress and so I cut little square pieces of cloth and I would have two or four that were the same pattern and then I used a different pattern to make the same size and shape or you can make different sizes and different shapes from another pattern and then put them all in a little container and she would get that container out and then she would start matching. So that's something that you can either send a letter with that gift to explain to the nurses and CNAs, hey, this is what this is. You know, please encourage mom or whoever to match up these little pieces. But sometimes they don't even need an instruction because matching just comes so naturally to us. Let's say you send it in a pencil box. You can have it when they open it that you've written right there, match. And they see that and they'll just start matching right away. Some games for someone in later stage dementia would be like ring toss or bubbles. You can do balloons and you can actually make your own sensory bags with balloons. So just widening the mouth of the balloon and putting in beans or rice or coffee grounds, something that's gonna have a, a certain texture and smell to it. This can actually be very soothing. A thing to keep in mind is that when we're playing games with kids, we use games as a way to explain rules and following those rules and accomplishing goals. But this is gonna be different for someone with progressive dementia. We need to be willing to loosen our grip on playing a game or making music or creating a craft or whatever it is for the sake of an end product and for teaching. Because with primary progressive dementia, we're not building skill, we're gonna have a loss of skill. So when we're doing activities with our loved ones with dementia, we need to keep in mind, it's not for the sake of an end goal, it's just for the sake of enjoying time together. People with dementia really help us live in the moment in that way, and I think that's something all of us need to spend a little more time doing. If you guys have any more idea of games that would be appropriate to play for someone with dementia, please comment below. And thank you so much for joining us today here at Dementia Care Source.